Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's message. I'm hearing again in my spirit the Lord talking about uh, the dropout spirit. I, I'm seeing somebody feeling such a pressure as the, the uh, month of August is quickly coming to a close and you will have to return to school. I see a dropout spirit drop on you and telling you you don't need to go through all that torture and trying to tell you last year was such a torture. Every semester you're almost blacked out and saying you don't need to finish this course. I'm here to decree to you by God's authority that you are no longer a dropout, leaving, leaving loose ends in your life. You will finish this course. You will get that certification. You will uh, defy all the odds and get the job done. In fact, I'm also uh, hearing it's not necessarily one of those courses where you go to school, but you are in uh, uh, the army, you are in the, the, the police force, as it were, uh, you are a young recruit and they are teaching you, but the pressure is so much. The competition between you and the people who are in that same batch with you, some of them are intimidated by your smartness and the anointing of God that's on you. And the pressure is on that you want to go and tell your superiors, I'm done, I can't take it. I'm here to tell you, fresh courage, I speak. Uh, Psalm 42 verse 5 into your life. In fact, you need to speak it into your life. It says, O soul, why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. And that's where the difference is. The difference is in your measure of hope in God. Hope thou in God, for you shall yet praise him. Give him praise that you were actually selected to get into that program. For he is the help of your continents. Lift your head up. Lift your chest up. Raise your hand up. And send a praise up to God in the name of Jesus. Again, I'll anoint my hands and work with God and with you to break that drop of destiny anointing oil. I'm anointing my hands with it. I'm declaring it's a point of contact that's going to release to you the spirit of the finisher in the life and the lives of those who have been under so much pressure. They want to drop out again. I rebuke that drop out again spirit. I prophesy you shall finish. In fact, I declare that God is going to give you that ability to grab all the loose ends of your life, you know, like in the carousel, in the, the circus, as the horse, horses ride around and the merry-go-round, there is a, a, a set of streamers just flying. That's how your life is. Grab hold of them and start to weave a new you. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Good morning, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, uh, just welcoming you th to this program. It's, it's your date with destiny, where we try to give you a peek into what's happening inside the ministry and the kind of anointings and word and worship that really prime us up to face another week. This week is no exception. We want you to call up someone as you view this program. And the theme we are pursuing for these last few weeks, self-governance, and the stage we have reached, the principles 
and the techniques of self-governance. We are sharing with you what has worked for us at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions. Amen. Call upon number. If you don't get anybody to answer you, 633-3780 today. You can call on Sunday morning and definitely call on Monday morning from 10 o'clock when the offices are open. Amen. So God bless you as you view today. So he said, fret not yourself because of evildoers. And he continues to, uh, talking about it. Uh, if you go right through Psalm 37, you'll realize uh, uh, there is a, a, a comparison, uh, as, as they say in literature, a juxtaposition between negative and positive, negative and positive. By the time you get to verse 3, it, 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 it begins to talk about casting everything on, on Jesus. And then it says, well, Jesus in that time it was the Lord but it's still Jesus and then he comes and say what in verse 4 he says and delight yourself also in the Lord huh? and he will give you the what desires of your and you continue reading right down and you realize if you switch from uh, 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 generating negativity because fretting is negative negativity turns to acid in your body If you let people get into you, they bring acid into your system. And they actually upset the balance between the alkaline, which is what your body will thrive with when the, the, the situation uh, inside of you is alkaline, it is not bitter, it is not acidic. Your body is stronger. That's what real good medicine is supposed to correct the imbalance between the acidity and the alkaline in your body. You thrive better. And that's why they tell you, well, eat herbs uh, and, and uh, I don't even know. I see people eat herbs and they're still dead. Anyway, anyway. Mm. <laughs> but, but let's deal with it from the psychological point of view and not too much on the nutrition thing because I have still I still have an anointing for piglies. But anyway, anyway. Well, let the animal eat the herbs. I will eat the animal. That's all. I will get the herbs from the animal. <laughs> Sister Wheeler, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Ah, Jesus. Why go out there and eat herbs? Right, anyway. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> But what, what I'm saying to us is as long as we allow heaven to live in us, obnoxious people may come in, but they can't stay. They may come and knocking on the door. They want to see me get vexed. They want to hear what I have inside. What they're going to get from inside is peace, peace. Wonderful peace. Anybody steal your peace? Rob you of your joy. Don't let anybody, or in fact, let me put it this way don't empower anybody to the point where you will give up your peace just to enter into argument with them. They don't deserve it. And one of the graphics in the power of words is this this, uh, this guy, the accuser. And it doesn't matter how the other person tries to explain. There are some people you're wasting good energy trying to state your case. They're not hearing. There's an icon on the WhatsApp thing. <laughs> Tell them, speak to my hand. Because they're not listening. If we, if we get that in our spirits, I'm telling you, we're going to navigate through all kinds of wicked people, obnoxious people, and still make it to where God wants us to get. Are you hearing me? And if, if you go right down through that psalm, right down through that psalm, I, I, I have a, a special appreciation now, a greater appreciation for verse 23, which says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In other words, God expects you for... It expects you to expect obnoxious people. 
He said, but I will choreograph your dance. He said, I don't want you to trudge in true life. Oh God, I gotta get. He said, I want you to dance true life. I'm ordering your steps. And even if you get tripped over sometimes, I'm going to do what? Uphold you. Another psalm say, I'll uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Because the assumption is that when you fell, you, you came into a season of unrighteousness. He said, but when I lift you up, I'm taking you out of that. I'll pick you up. I'll turn you around. I, I want us to live life jolly. Uh, well, then the, um, the, the, the adverb from jolly has to be jollily. Uh, we have to live life jollily. Tell it if I live life jollily. <laughs> you always be always happy. You always have a way to, to turn the atmosphere. Bust a joke. Tell anybody bust a joke. Uh, even if you alone laugh, that's all right. You, you, know, you, know that, you know that funk? If I alone laugh at a joke, people just laugh at me. So they really laugh at the joke. <laughs> no, some of us are taking ourselves too seriously. So seriously that we can't even break out into a little laugh. God gave you 32 pearly gates. Uh, well, with whatever you have left. Or even what you pay for. Uh, it's yours, right? And your car that you pay for is yours. And, and, and some people, and your hair is yours. That you, well, the, the teeth you pay for is yours. It's your teeth. Listen to me, I want... Uh, all of us to, 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 to chisel ourselves in such a way that within five minutes of somebody meeting you, you relax them. When they leave you, they must feel, I may never meet Anna again, but she has impacted me to the point that I'm not going to be so uptight anymore. And, 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 and you know what, Make, for me, what is, uh, uh, recently, as I said, I'm appreciating that section of um, Psalm 37 more. I realized that verse 25 is connected to verse 23 and to verse 24. Because it's a continued thought. It says that in verse 23, it says that God is ordering my steps. Verse 24 says, if I fall. He's going to pick me up. And then David says, I was young. Shava. And now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed. Begging bread. In other words, there is nothing that you can do to make God turn his back on you. Because that's what forsaken means. If people forsake you, that's all right. There are other people coming down the road. You just keep on walking. Tell anybody, keep on walking. Uh, I, I almost told you do like Johnny, but, but, but you just keep on walking. <laughs> just keep on walking because there are some people lined up who will bring some joy to your life. That set that messed you up, God said, I just ordered your step through there so you learn how to worship me. You learn how to praise me. I, in fact, why, why, why I allow you to walk through there is because you're feeling you too much all that. So I had them help strip you a little. But I want you to know I've never forsaken the righteous. Hey! I've never forsaken the righteous. Even when the righteous fall. You saw the best in me. When wow. 40 years of marriage. Uh, you know, 64 years old. And I want to start by saying to you, uh, I know other people are looking, but you get a chance of peeping on me talking. You've aged wonderfully. I look at you, I observe the progress over the years physically, and I just want to say, yeah, you are as attractive to me as you were when you were a young man. So at least I can say that. <laughs> Uh, many times uh, I, I sit on the seat there and I look at Vivian preaching and he would make a move and I'm saying my heart will go boodup. 
and I'll say, you know, Jamie, I need to listen to the preacher and I'll not pay attention to the preacher. So I used to tell you, uh, you know, how wonderful um, you look physically, very attractive, and I thank God for that. But beyond that, I, although we are married for 40 years, we know each other much more than that. So uh, it could be like uh, we were, what, three years, five years, 45. It could be we almost 50 years or so we knew each other. And I give God praise for you. Um, I want you to live long. I pray that all the time. And many times when you're sleeping, I, every day, every night, I just lay hands and pray that God will give you long life uh, so that you could fulfill all that God has for you. Um, there's a whole lot more for you to do. Uh, you said that God told you you'll write 100 books. Uh, and yet you've written about 30 something books, so you have a long, a long way to go. That's why you write in your profile, writing another book. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to quicken the pace or, or you're going to be living very long and I would prefer the second option. Um, you know, I, I thank God. I thank God for your fathering and I often say not only did you father our children but you fathered me. Um, in a way, you were my father. I didn't have one and God put you in my life to take me through my healing process and I thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you, you, you met me at a very difficult time in my life and uh, I want to publicly say thank you for staying with me all these years through my healing process. Many men would have walked away because they didn't quite understand what was happening but you stayed and uh, I will always love you for that. Um, I could go on and on and on but I'm sure <laughs> uh, you know I, I need to stop at some point but in a way thank you. Happy birthday to you and I look forward to celebrated many, many more years um, with you, many more birthdays with you, standing alongside you, uh, standing behind you at times, and I don't mind standing behind you. Um, I, I know people say, time to come out. Yeah, well, I like behind as well. It's, it's good, it's all good. Um, God bless you. Um, there are so many good qualities that you do have. It's amazing, but God bless you. and. He, God told me, Holy Spirit said to me that I've given you my best gift. And uh, if God could tell me that, then I know I could never have gotten anybody better than you. God bless you real good. Good. We give God the praise. We are sure that you are becoming even more grounded and more solidly determined that you are going to fulfill your mandate in the earth. Remember the essence of self-governance is me, you, surrendering our wills to God. You really cannot govern yourself without God who made yourself. You, you understand that? Think about it from that angle. Okay, good. And we are coming closer to the month of September, uh, the first Saturday of which is the third, when we have our Destiny Credit Union financial workshop, as you see on the flyer right now. Uh, and the conveners are uh, Sister Bethel, Catherine Bethel, the owner and operator of Bee's Ice Cream, together with her husband and the staff there, Bee's Ice Cream. And uh, if anybody knows about starting from scratch and reaching to the top, she knows. So you need to be there in this seminar on the 3rd of September. I, as I've been saying for the entire month, I'll throw in my little two cents for what God has shown me and how it works. I, I, I will pray for you at the end of the session that you will not just have the idea, but you will work the idea. So 3rd of September, 3rd of September, uh, which is the first Saturday in September, get into that seminar. You'll be amazed. We have testimonies upon testimonies of people who uh, were exposed to the teachings, not just here in Trinidad, even overseas, and their lives can be the same again. Good. Uh, we also want you to know on the 4th, which is the um, first Sunday of September, we are having our book bag blessing. Take a testimony from book bag blessing right now and see how God helps somebody who thought they could not make it 
succeed at a level they could, did not expect after they re were released by way of the word that came during the book bag blessing session. Amen. I mean, it's a form five past all eight subjects, and I want to encourage a uh, passion or is gifted in any specific area to pursue it with all that you have because every talent is an opportunity to further yourself. There are scholarship opportunities open to, any, to talented persons. There's a specific category for talented individuals. And go after it with all you have and trust God that he will pull you through it. I'm into form six now. That means I'm doing keep. This is my last year. Thank God. Um, <laughs> Jeez, keep. <laughs> uh, well, the first year, I passed all four subjects. It is a bumpy ride. It continues to be a bumpy ride. Coming out of Intercol 2015, it was all about, for me, it was all about keeping up with the work. I'd, during this season, it was not about going ahead of the class and seeing how much more you could do. It was just about keeping up so that in this term, you could maximize the opportunity and the time to just focus on studies. Um, I'm in the process of trying to secure scholarship, so if anybody out there looking. <laughs> So I'm um, trying to fly out in probably July, so uh, it's about getting keep done and out of the way to further my life. I see myself having a future in sport, so I'm using this academic opportunity in, a, in the form of a scholarship to open up new doors so I can live the dream. I want to encourage parents to not pull the children out of sports or the things that they love because they have exams this year or whatever else because you never know what could, what could come out of it. That's my testimony for today. Thank you very much. Good. I'm sure you're going to be here in it. And uh, as a treat to the end of our program here, we're giving you a little clip of one of the sessions we did with the financial workshop. It will encourage you to come on that Saturday. Amen? Good. So don't forget uh, our three services on the air every week, Monday at 9 p.m. on 98.1, Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. on 107.1, The Word, and Fridays at 3 p.m. on 98.1 FM again with Ask Pastor Gemma. Amen. We really want you to be part of what's happening at Divine Destiny. So we have opened the windows into Divine Destiny by way of our various programs. You will be blessed. Amen. I am Apostle Vivian Duncan and we have my wife, Apostle Gemma and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. The song says that I'm living. I'm living on the top. Living on the top. See, I'm living the best life, and I'm living a blessed life. I am. And our minds are set on certain ways of thinking. If there's going to be change, expect a battle. Expect a what? Because of what? Because you desire to change. If you don't want to change, then you're in the wrong place. I'll say to you again. If you have decided this, how I'm going to live my life for the rest of my life, always blaming somebody for not having enough 
always thinking that somebody is getting a better break than me. If you want to live your life like that, then I can tell you, you might as well get up and go back home. Of course, leave your $100 that you have paid. That's going to be a change. But if you desire to be different, and tell your neighbor, I desire to be different. Then I am ready for war. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for war. You got to fight your money at the end of the month. I say you got to have to fight that salary at the end of the month. You got to fight that thought that you have. You saw, the, you, you saw the outfit already and the bag to go with it and the shoes in the mall. And, 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 and you tell yourself, as soon as I get paid, I'm going and lick it up. You're going to have to fight that huh? and put that money towards an investment. Huh? Good. Because all that we are talking about begins and ends here. It begins with the mind and ends with the mind. Therefore, we have to go into our minds and reconfigure it. Food in the spirit of your mind. The way your mind thinks could decide whether you are poor or you are on your way to becoming wealthy. And I, and I didn't say whether you are poor or you are wealthy because wealth is relative. I say wealth is relative. And it all depends on who your relatives are. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, if your relative is the, is the guy who said to one of uh, uh, um, the members of this church, the covenanters of this church, uh, a real big businessman, he said to him, he told him, I don't need to buy another property. I don't need to sell another car. I don't need to sell nothing else. And I'll still be able to feed, house, clothes, Ed, clothe, educate 15 generations from now. Are uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Uh, he is wealthy. Um, myself and uh, uh, Apostle Jim, we could handle ourselves and uh, we can uh, almost handle our children. We're still waiting to do something for our grandchildren. So we are on our way to getting wealthy because wealth is a relative term amen? amen and it all depends on who your relatives are tell anybody it all depends on who your relatives are next time on divine destiny worship centers program this program it's your date with destiny you will hear seven times i'm gonna pick him up because i have a plan for him that he will never beg bread in fact, the righteous will have bread to share. The righteous, especially in the midst of a season like this, where everybody is bawling, there's an Isaac anointing available. I'm going to sow bread into people's lives. I'm going to sow joy into people's lives. I'll sow a song into people's lives. And I know in this very year, I'm going to get a return. I'm going to get a harvest. My God, Abba Shanda. If you don't give me, although I gave you, there are other people lined up. Amen. Because harvest with God is always abundant. I've never seen the righteous forsake. No, I see begging bread. What did Psalm 18 say? Psalm 18 say, when mother and father forsake you, the Lord, the same one who is ordering your steps, he going to pick you up. And sometimes he said, even when you are left alone, I find families. I put the solitary in families. You continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.